Hi everyone, so today I thought we could take a look at another video by Dr. John McDougall, who I made a couple of videos about um, last month. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, at the age of 77, in my view, prematurely, but uh, you can make up your own mind about that. Why do I want to look at this issue? It's come up in the comments. I'm not going to show the comments, but it's come up in the comments that a lot of people are confusing why I sometimes use the word starch and sugar interchangeably. So I thought uh, McDougall made a video called Clearing Up the Confusion Around Sugar. I thought it might be a good idea to take a look at what he says. If I were to ask a typical consumer what the most harmful ingredient in the Western diet is, I'd likely I'd get the answer sugar. But I want to tell you right off that what they're talking about is simple sugars like in white table sugar, honey, molasses, maple syrup. So if you ask me what the most harmful ingredient is in the modern diet, um, yeah, sugar would be up there, but it's I, I'm not exactly sure. It might be something more like the seed oils or the combination of refined seed oils and sugars, processed food. That's probably what I'd say. So, but yeah, sugar is definitely, if not one, number two or three. Simple sugars, they can cause some problems. They're not health food. You know, eat them in sufficient quantities. What happens is they end up uh, in your mouth and they cause certain bacteria to grow that rot your teeth. These sugars provide calories. And so don't encourage weight loss, even though sugar is not turned into fat readily. These sugar sugar is not turned into fat readily. Um, so I, it depends what kind of sugar he's talking about. Um, we, and I don't know when he made this video. It's only two years old on YouTube, but I have a feeling from the look of him that it's more than two years ago. So he may not have known. There's a paper that came out in 2010, which talks about fructose metabolism. Maybe I'll put a link in the footnotes and maybe I'll even put a screenshot of that paper um, when I do the edit. But what that paper shows is that Fructose, excess fructose in the body has to be turned into sugar. Uh, it has to be turned into fat, excuse me. So maybe he didn't know that at this time, but it is, it's not an easy process. It's a complicated process, but it is readily, it is easily, quickly turned into fat. Fructose in particular, fructose is a sugar. Sugars are empty calories, so you get no other nutrients, no vitamins, minerals, fiber, protein, nothing else but just pure white sugar, so they're empty calories. And in sensitive people, people who have a tendency towards high fats in their blood, high triglycerides, they'll raise triglyceride levels. So we always see that when people reduce carbohydrates, including sugar, but I would say all carbohydrates, um, their triglycerides go down. So when people are eating more carbohydrates on a mixed diet, he's going to talk about, I think he's going to talk about things that aren't mixed diets, like very high carb, very low fat diets. But in, a, in the context of a mixed diet, when you raise carbs, you always increase triglycerides in a normal person. So with that in mind, uh, should you blame sugar for all the atrocities that we suffer for that you see in people who live on the Western diet? Absolutely not. I agree. There's a lot of things going on. It's not just sugar. You know, sugar is uh, minor on the list concerning uh, harmful aspects of the Western diet. Yeah, that I wouldn't go that far to say that it's minor. Sugar is a big deal, right? Or diet. I'd have to say if I was going to list them in order of damage, I'd probably list, and it's artificial what I'm going to tell you now, because they're all kind of mixed up. You know, you can't really separate one from another, but let's just try. I would say fat is probably the most toxic when it comes to causing diabetes, obesity, promoting cancer. So remember, I've shown data and I'll show, maybe I'll put up some screenshots here too, that we have a lot of data showing that high fat diets reverse diabetes, not just one or two studies. We have a lot of studies and going back like 100, 200 years, right? In, in the mid 19th century, I think is when that research started to be compiled. So there's a lot of data on how um, high fat diets, high fat, low carb diets can decrease tendency towards diabetes or a tendency towards obesity and so on. Cancer, damaging the arteries, causing bleeding problems. Cancer is another one. So we have uh, good data showing that high-fat diets, ketogenic diets in particular, so it needs to be specifically formulated high-fat diets, improve outcomes in many types of cancer. Yeah, if you're going to pick on the components of a food plan, let's go fat first. Then I would go protein. You know, there's never been a case of protein deficiency ever reported. Let's just start there. <laughs> Look at the guy who's talking and then consider what he's saying. There's never been a case of protein deficiency. Again, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. There is data that's coming out now in the last four or five years from certain labs, which really show the correlation between protein consumption and um, good health outcomes, good healthy lifespan, longer lifespan, good health span, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't know when this was made, um, but certainly now at this point when I'm recording this in July of 2024, we do have data showing that um, Protein deficiency, of course, that's now we're talking extreme cases, but we do have data that higher consumption of protein um, improves many, many health outcomes, especially as one gets older. How about problems of protein excess? Well, protein excess, it damages the kidneys and the liver. These are the organs. There's no, there's zero evidence. Even when he was making this video, there would have been zero evidence to support that hypothesis. 
excess protein does not damage the kidneys or the liver on in isolation as excess protein in the context of excess calories overall or excess sorry calories is the wrong term excess food mass overall in the context of people who are diabetic have high blood pressure and so on um, yes that could be a problem in the context of someone eating a higher carb diet right there are studies now showing and there are certainly case studies showing that people can reverse chronic kidney disease with a higher protein, higher fat, very low carb diet. So no, he's mistaken here. Friends that process this extra protein, and you overwork them with the amount of protein typical to the American diet. The uh, protein uh, consists of amino acids. So you deliver a high acid load to the body. That acid has to be buffered or you die. The primary buffering system of the body is the bones. So the bones dissolve and you create a condition of weak bones. Come in. So is, he, is he really saying that osteoporosis is associated with high protein consumption? Is that really what he's saying? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Osteoporosis is associated with eating more high protein animal foods. Um, I'm going to look and see if I can find any studies like that. I doubt I, I can, but um, yeah, it's just, it's just nonsense what he's talking here. Known as osteoporosis, and that bone material ends up in your kidneys, solidifies, and gives you kidney stones. So protein Kidney stones are mostly from oxalates, right? Which is mostly in plant foods. There are some animal foods that are also high oxalate, especially I'm looking at things like collagen powders and so on, but in or supplements in general. Um, but in general, in terms of whole foods, your kidney stones are mostly coming from oxalates, which are mostly coming from high oxalate foods. Spinach, raw spinach is a big one. Um, other foods like that, other green foods. And vegetables in general, plant foods in general. You know, I have to say is number two. Number three would be... Well, maybe refined foods. And then you, of course, do a lot of things. You add oils, you add all kinds of components that you think are important to be in the food. And most importantly, you take away from the dietary fiber. So I'd say if you're going to isolate components of the diet, probably lack of fiber would be next. Then would come salt and sugar. So obviously, I don't agree with him on fiber. The, the, uh, the harm to the body from salt and sugar for most of the population is minor, insignificant. You know, those with extremes in both nutrients are going to get into problems. But you really have to push your limits to do that. Uh, the other important thing I want to tell you about salt and sugar, and you ask about sugar, refined sugar, is it will often make the difference as to whether you eat your food or not, because you want it to taste good. When he's saying that the harms of sugar aren't that significant, what, is he, what does that mean exactly? Because when you have anyone, like you can put a continuous glucose monitor on, on your arm and you can check this yourself, right? If anyone eats a sugary meal, like what he's going to describe, you know, the kind of stuff he's eating, um, oatmeal with sugar or maple syrup or whatever, you can see the spikes, right? And you can see that the spikes, if you've been doing those kind of meals for a long time, you can see that they take a long time to go under, uh, go back down. And when we talk about blood sugar spikes, we're talking about area under the curve. We're talking about damage being done in all the organs, the liver, the kidneys, even the heart and the brain, right? We know that Alzheimer's, for example, is called type three diabetes in the literature, right? So um, when he's saying that the harms of sugar are not that serious, what does he mean exactly? Because they're very serious and they're very well documented. And the primary pleasurable taste on the tip of the tongue there is salt and sugar. So you want to get your oatmeal down in the morning, you add a little bit of brown sugar to the surface. Likewise, that rice dish that you really enjoy. Likely so, so again, he did mention the oatmeal with sugar. Not advisable. Oatmeal already is a very high glycemic food, even if you, you're taking whatever, you know, organic, whole grain, Irish oats, whatever you want to call them. Still a very high glycemic index food um, or glycemic load food. Not recommended. If you're adding sugar on top of it, you're just making that worse. So yeah, not great. Of you, especially when you start to change your diet, are going to enjoy a little bit of salt on the surface of the food. Yeah, tending towards a lower sodium and lower sugar diet, that's important. But learning to like the food is even more important. Now, let me just end this conversation by telling you about Walter Kempner at Duke University. Walter Kempner. So he is mentioning, as I mentioned in, in the other videos I made about him, Kempner is sort of his guru, one of his gurus, right? And Kempner is going to talk about the diet now. Let's see what he says. He was at Duke for seven decades. For two decades, the rice diet supported Duke University primarily, a big part of the, of the university in Durham, North Carolina. The rice diet uh, was uh, brought to Duke University by Walter Kempner. The rice diet consists of white rice, fruit, fruit juice, and table sugar. 100% correct. And by the way, in order to get people to adhere to the rice diet, what did Kempner do? He whipped his patients, for which he was later sued. And, and table sugar can amount to as much as 2,000 calories in people who need to gain weight. White sugar is part of the diet. Now, this diet is used to treat people who are very ill. I call it the diet for the nearly dead. It's an extreme approach that I use on rare occasions, but it's valuable when I do need it. This kind of diet reverses severe heart disease, reverses kidney disease, takes people with morbid deadly. So, so why would it do this? Again, we are um, looking at that Randall cycle and we are really shutting down the fat burning side of it. And we're only going to glucose, right? But it's, it's, it's severely deficient and he's admitting this. It's, it's not a great diet. It's deficient in a lot of 
minerals and vitamins and many other things, right? So can you get results on like eating pure, a diet of pure sugar? I suppose you could because it's going into almost a kind of starvation mode. The body has energy, but it doesn't have protein. It doesn't have lots of other things that it needs to survive. So it's going to do some cleaning up. It's going to do some weird stuff. You get some sort of fasting, uh, similar effects to fasting in some of these extreme restriction diets. Again, just because it can be used in some rare cases, some short period of time to get some good effects, doesn't mean that it should be used, right? Really hypertension and puts them down to normal blood pressure. That's on a diet that is 93% sugar. Yeah, it's not all white sugar. It's rice too, which is sugar in many people's emotions. So you just see what he just did? He, he, he did exactly the same thing that people are accusing me of doing, which is alternating between starch and sugar. And why does he do that? It's an important uh, distinction here. It's an important discussion to have. So I found this website, Microbe Notes. Check it out. It looks super cool. Uh, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. This, the definition of a starch, before we start here, what is the definition of a starch? Definition of a starch is a polysaccharide, which functions as a carbohydrate store, blah, 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 right? Polysaccharides are this, cellulose, starch, and glycogen, okay? The difference between them is, is I'll get into in a minute, but before we get to polysaccharides, let's talk about monosaccharides. Polysaccharides, what does it mean, by the way? Poly means many. Saccharide just means sugar. These are many molecules of sugar that are just attached to one another, right? With an oxygen as a, as a bond, right? Those are polysaccharides. Monosaccharides, the most famous three are these ones, glucose, fructose, and galactose. If you have one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose, that makes sucrose, which is, or sucrose, some people say, which is table sugar, right? That's what this looks like. If you have one mo molecule of glucose and one molecule of galactose, that makes lactose, which is milk sugar. These are the two most common disaccharides. There are many others, but we don't need to um, go into them. And then the polysaccharides, so these are many sugars that are bound together. Starch, remember this is the starch solution guy. Starch is just glucose after glucose after glucose after glucose, bound together with an oxygen. And the only difference between starch, which I think most people, except for this guy, would agree, not great, shouldn't be a huge percentage of your diet. Even the vegans are saying this these days. The only difference between starch and fiber, which is mostly cellulose, which is here, there are many different fibers, but one of the most basic ones is cellulose. Cellulose cannot be digested. Humans do not possess the enzyme to break this particular thing down, but look at it closely. The only difference is just the, the, the order of the molecules. Here, the molecules are all going the same way. Here, one is, if you want to think about it, one, one is straight, one is upside down, one is straight, one is upside down, if you want to think about it that way, right? Fascinating stuff. And then glycogen is how we store plants can store their sugars in cellulose. We store uh, our sugars in something called glycogen, which is mostly in the liver and the muscles, right? Um, and these are the, the glycogen bonds here. So super interesting stuff. But the point is that the difference between sugar and starch is really just in a name. Like they're, they're the same molecule, it's just different lengths of them. Um, and you can test this. You, you can have, you know, again, that CGM, continuous glucose monitor, or even pricking your finger and testing your blood sugar is a super interesting tool. Have whatever you want, uh, 50 grams of, you know, just pure sugar, uh, or I wouldn't, 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 really wouldn't recommend this, but have, you know, 100 grams of Coca-Cola and test your blood sugar 45 minutes later. Then have 100 grams of white rice, test your blood sugar, uh, you know, 45 minutes later. See what the difference is. There will be a difference, but it's going to vary from person to person. And it's not going to, in what I've seen, based on the data that I've looked at, it's not going to be hugely significant, that difference. Technically speaking, starches are sugars. Most people's minds, and correctly is so. You know, the carbohydrates, uh, they have to be complex when it's present in rice and simple when it's present in table sugar. 93% of the calories on the, on the Kempner diet. So you know, when he's saying complex carbohydrates, it's important to remember, he's, he's, he's the starch guy. <laughs> he's just talking about... Um, long chains of simple sugar, right? Which are not that complex. From table sugar, or excuse me, come from sugar in general, white rice and, and table sugar. So uh, you need to put things in perspective. Uh, yes, you want to tend towards a perfect diet, but you know, you've heard the saying that perfection in the, may be in the way of success. You don't want that to happen. You want to like your food. You want to make major shifts in your diet that really make a difference, that will cause you to enjoy life more, feel better, and live longer. And those major shifts are in the, in the components of the food, which are centered around meat and dairy. You want to instead switch to switch. Yes. Yeah, so in the vegan vegan propaganda line. So so listen, how can we sum up here? Um, starches are different from sugars in the way that say um, a full train is different from just the car of a train, right? That's the only difference. It's, they're just different, it's just longer chains of the same molecule. So when we're looking at all the data, 
um, which shows problems with insulin levels, problems with glucose spikes and so on. Keep that in mind. Like this guy is telling you to just have more of the thing that's causing the problems. Thanks. With that, I'm Samir. I'll see you in the next one.